The anatomy section is a very detailed section on the anatomy of the head and neck and the mandibular systems. We'll start with the osteology section. You'll notice that again we have these thumbnails. You can click on them and you will end up with large images that illustrate the points that are being discussed. Here's one of the skull. And we'll go down through this. You've got the osteology illustrating the various muscles in the context of the skull. And we'll go down through this. All the bones are described and illustrated where they belong. Sphenoid face, maxilla, mandible, nasal bones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We get down through this, we end up with the spinal cord, cervical spine, and the muscles there. This is the first of the 3D models that we have. And these are rotatable models. You can rotate these around, look at them from various views. What we've done over here on the right is predefined at different positions. So you can take a look at the C1 vertebrae, you can look at it close up, and you can look at it without any of its neighboring bones. Same for C2, C3, let's go down to C5. And again, you have a variety of different bones. Once you arrive at this position, you can still rotate it around and look at it individually. So normal bony anatomy, atypical pictures of the spine, describes all of the cer cervical vertebrae, hyoid bone and its importance. Dr. Charles Goodacre wrote the section on the temporomandibular joint, and he's a world expert on this. And again, you have media that you can look at that illustrates the point, you can blow it up. We'll go down through this. This is a model that we developed and labeled We'll see that as an animation in a few moments. So we go down through all of this and it shows you the anatomy of the joint in very great detail. Here's the disc, all the features of the disc, the types of tissues that are involved with the disc, innervation, vascular supply, and uh, now we get to a section on the muscles of the head and neck. This is a skull, real skull, that we artistically rendered the muscles in. You've got the muscles, their attachment, temporalis, descriptors of those. There are clinical dissections in here illustrating the muscles. And we'll go through this, pterygoids. We come to one of our 3D models. And this is a model of all the muscles of mastication, and you can rotate this around and view it from any angle that you'd like. Again, we have predefined some of these views because those are the ones that we find the most useful. So for instance, if you're after the temporalis, it'll rotate around a temporalis. If you're after the medial pterygoids, it'll rotate it around there. Lateral pterygoids, it'll show you where those are, upper body, lower body etc. The disc, posterior attachment, etc. So these are very, very useful models in figuring out the anatomy of these structures. Go back to the section and this is the action of the muscles of mastication. This is what kind of movements are produced with certain muscle actions. So giving what muscles fire, you can figure out what direction the jaw is going to go, and types of muscles that are used, histology sections. Gets down to the cervical spine area, another 3D model. You can click on these and you can see muscles are modeled in this three-dimensional model. Myelohyoid, for instance, sternohyoid, Thyrohyoid, the trapezius, which is the one dentists always get sore when they practice, etc. Again, these are movable, so you can rotate this around and get a 360 interactive view while you're studying these. So now I have descriptors of all of the muscles of the shoulder girdle 
cervical muscles, suboccipital muscles, etc., muscles of the tongue, and then we get into the innervation of the head and neck again, Charles. McNeil did this for us, and we've got a dissection of the brain and the brain stem, a three-dimensional brain that shows the different structures and different views of the brain, as well as cross-sections that you can go into. Section on the cranial nerves. This is a nice model, and I will show you the interactive version of that in a moment. Trigeminal nerve pathways in the brain. Central nervous system pain mechanisms. There's an overview and what the pain mechanisms are in the brain. Different structures illustrating the pain pathways. And we get into dysesthesias, hyperesthesias, et cetera, et cetera, some of the pathological conditions. When we come to the cranial nerves, the cranial nerves, of course, are a very important structure to know and understand. It's also very difficult to figure out where these are, where they go, et cetera. So what we've done here is attempted to help with the study of this. This is all the cranial nerves inside an accurate human skull taken from a CAT scan. And we can click the skull and we can click on it and make it semi-transparent so you can see all of the cranial nerves in their entirety inside a transparent skull. Or you can go down and look at the nerves individually. In this case, let's look at the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. And you can see we've thrown away the rest of them and that's the only one we've got. You can look at it as an individual nerve with no skull around it or as a nerve with the skull around it. So look at the trigeminal nerve. All these can be viewed as a cross section so that you're just looking at the half of the skull. Again, you can zoom in, you can rotate around, see what foramina the nerves go through. And so this is a very, very excellent way of studying the anatomy and the relationships of the nerves to the skull bones. These are described in detail, the functions are described in detail, and we go through until we get to the mandibular movements.